Okay, now that we've gone over rotary walking, that is hammer throwing or hammer turning in its most basic sense, we're going to get now more of a feel of what actually happens in the event, meaning that we're going to start right from the beginning with the proper heel toe technique. We're going to bring Jake in here again, and we're going to start with the right hand drill. Um, again, he's using the uh, 14 pound hammer, and at certain times we'll, we'll throw uh, in the medicine ball. Um, or the uh, medicine ball on a rope to show you that you don't need, you know, you don't need your athletic director saying, well, you can't practice uh, hammer drills because I'm not going to allow you to have that steel ball that's normally thrown outside in our indoor facility. So that's why medicine balls, brooms, boards, all kinds of things, cones can be used. Uh, you just need to have a, a, a little keen sense of awareness of what you're trying to do here. So we're going to have Jake start on a right hand drill. What he's going to do is he's going to hold the ball in his right hand only and he's just going to walk around. Want the ball to be long and just let it hang. He's going to initiate the turn here by stepping right to 180 on the right foot. And he's going to try to keep both feet on the ground for as long as possible and step in the direction of the throw. Start to sit back a little bit so the shoulders get back behind the hammer. Good, Jake. Now, as you see at the end, the hammer started to speed up a lot, okay? When you do this initially, yes, you do get dizzy. That's one of the questions that we always get asked. Oh, I've seen you do the hammer throw before. Aren't you guys dizzy? No, we don't really get dizzy anymore. But when athletes first start turning and do multiple turns, you are going to get to the end of the throw and, and, and try to figure out where you're at. That is normal. That is something that builds up with time. OK, now we're going to bring John in. And what we might want to do this time is uh, Maybe focus in more on the footwork. Uh, Jake showed you more of the, of, of the body directions, and we're going to look more for the footwork. Uh, what J John's going to do is start walking around. He's going to keep his left knee bent. The left knee never leaves the ground. Steps in, the right foot. And he turns over the ankle, steps in, tries to move the right foot forward on a bent left knee. The ball will start to go up, which means the left knee stays flexed and finish. Good. And as you notice when John was turning there, we have a yellow line that they, that they come down here. Some people use uh, uh, lines of a track. We have this as a, uh, an indoor tennis court as well. And what that does is that gives me as a coach, it gives me an aesthetic line that I can follow John's progression because the idea is for him to move in a continual straight line with that drill. Now, one of the common mistakes that, that, that athletes will make in the hammer throw when they're learning this drill is that they will overturn with their feet, okay? Meaning that as they come in, that this foot swings out around and all the way back. Especially if they've had a high school uh, career in the discus, where the discus, we, where we teach a wide leg. In the hammer, it's better if your knees stay tight. It was best explained to me once by imagine that you have a volleyball and you're trying to squeeze it between your knees as you attempt to turn. That's the width that you want, it, that, you want th that to travel. So we're always trying to get our athletes to keep their knees tight, to keep their footwork progressing. Now, if that right foot always swings all the way back around, I'm not going anywhere. To get direction across the circle, which is very important in the hammer, we need to think of turning on that heel and stepping forward. Notice that the left knee is slightly bent. The arms are long. I'm in a solid catch position. I'm not tipped over here. I've got my chin back. My arms are long, OK? So these are some of the basic things that we, that we learn when we try to teach the hammer. Now, someone might ask, why, why a right hand drill? You throw the hammer with two hands. The hammer is a push event, OK? It's a push event, which means that for a right-handed thrower, it's a right-sided event. The left side remains passive. That's why we always get the athletes to try to relax their arms and shoulders. Radius is key in the hammer. We want to keep the arms long. The left side is very passive. The right side is very active. So the actual pushing of the hammer is always done with the right side and the right knee. It's all right side driven. So we, we do the right hand drill, and I'll bring Jake in here for one more, and I'll actually get him when he lands to try to push the ball across his body with the right side to give action of what happens more at a collegiate All-American level 
or an Olympic level is that we're working off of each catch to push the ball and see if you can see this move up.